Music on the intercom. Okay. Okay. It's yeah, it's not elementary. Okay. So I'm Caden, the project organizer, and I will I mean not I will this is our project on George Archibald and Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Uh, as I said, I'm Caden. I'm Alexis. Who are you? I'm Dill. <laughs> I'm Kendall. And I'm TJ. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> what did he do? Uh, in 1973, when the cranes were almost at extinction, George Archibald co-founded the International Crane Foundation with Ron Sowie. Um, and he also continues his conservation in North Korea, Africa, North America, and much more. So, his understanding for nature, nature and cultural systems, natural and cultural systems. Dr. Archibald is connected with birds since his childhood, and as he aged, he gained especially uh, strong appreciation for cranes. And so in his journey of co-founding and running the International Crane Foundation and working to save cranes around the world, he has interacted with birds in many different ways, uh, the most famous of which was the dancing with Tex. So he did so for six years, a direct interaction with a natural process, and after which she laid a fertile egg which hatched a uh, text, or gee whiz, um, to save cranes, to help to save cranes. Uh, Dr. Archibald has traveled all over the world to communicate with a variety of cultures in order to advocate for cranes everywhere because there's species all over the world. So he travels as often as possible and enjoys working with native people to create alliances. He is, uh, in a quote from Dr. Archibald, especially comfortable in Buddhist cultures where nature and human relationships are respected and revered. Consequently, I, Dr. Archibald, bring groups of members of the ICF to Mongolia and Bhutan annually. Okay, so some of the influences with his early life with with birds is uh, when he was young, when he lived in Canada still, he had a he had a menagerie of all kinds of different domestic domesticated birds. But in particular, which I found interesting because you know I'm a chicken lover, I have my own chickens, his his first birds that he ever had were four Rhode Island red hens that uh that they had just like to lay eggs and such and just for the experience which I thought was really cool. But yeah. Um, George grew up on a small farm in Glasgow, Nova Scotia, Canada, and uh, the pasture provided a cow, a horse, and a space for a vegetable garden. Um, he's the second born out of six children, two girls and four boys. All of his siblings had an interest in nature, like gardening, fishing, farming, and hunting. However, George was more interested in birds. Um, his parents were teachers for nature. Um, they shared the interest of learning and knowing more about nature. Um, some of his other influences come from when he was a kid. And when George was a kid, he lived in Nova Scotia, where he was raised by his parents. And his grandparents had an influence on him and helped make him a hard worker. And he would later use this skill for later things in life. And when when he was young, he had a love for birds. And later in life, when he went to college for ornithology, he studied cranes and learned, and learned more about how... Uh, <clears throat> he studied cranes and learned more about how... Uh, I just keep saying how... Uh, <laughs> He studied cranes and learned more about them because they were the only bird on campus. The area he studied is known as the Cornell Queen. One of his colleagues, Juan Sai, would become an expert on Siberian cranes. George was also inspired by Aldo Leopold's book, A Sand County Almanac, where Aldo Leopold wrote about cranes and the lost 
and the loss of their habitat. When we hear his call, we hear no mere bird. We hear the trumpet in the orchestra of evolution. Now they stand humbled, adrift in history. He set out to the same. He set out to save the cranes after reading that text, and with the help of Juan Soy, they created the International Crane Foundation in Baraboo, Wisconsin, which is also coincidentally located about ten miles away from the Aldo Leopold Cap. Um. Struggles he faced um, before a Johnny Carson sh the Tonight Show reported the interview. Um, sadly, uh, uh, a flock of raccoons came into the enclosure and killed Tex. Um, he didn't really talk about it. Uh, uh, he didn't really talk about it in interviews. So um, he also. There's another struggle, uh, the d disease, the, the disease disaster of the captive flock and unexpected death of his friend, uh, Ron Sowie. Um, okay, so leadership qualities. Uh, Dr. Archibald is easily described as soft-spoken, motivated, hardworking, dedicated, and optimistic. This and his visionary style, youthful enthusiasm, and his ability to communicate with a wide variety of people and cultures makes him a passionate educator, leader, and conservationist. Another note may be made also of the sacrifices made in his daily life and comfort for the love of cranes. An example pictured here when his office was moved into Texas Pen so that they could bond more uh, to aid in the dancing and laying of the fertile egg. So. Okay. Um, after a land donation and some work, George Archibald and his good friend Juan Soy would create the International Crane Foundation where they would work with people from around the world to help save cranes from extinction. In 1976, George Archibald would acquire a whooping crane named Tex, who didn't like other birds much. So George would dance with Tex until the day Tex was able to create an offspring named G Wiz. With G Wiz, they would create an offspring and would set them with a captive flock to be released into the wild. After all of that, George was able to help save the whooping cranes from complete extinction. They are still highly endangered today, but George and his team works a lot with the whipping crane to help save them and their population is much higher than it was in 1976. The International Crane Foundation works with other cranes too, being the only place where you can see all 15 of the species in one place. There aren't only cranes at the International Crane Foundation, there are cranes from around the world, which is why George travels to visit all of them to get a better understanding of the habitat and activities for his research. George takes many steps to make sure his birds have the best environment they can, which is one of the reasons why the International Crane Foundation is so successful. The Tex story is well known today in the book called Dancing with Tex, and the International Crane Foundation has done massive leaps in helping save the cranes, and they don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Uh, some other just random info. Um, he won uh, the... Uh, MacArthur Fellowship Award and the Global 500 Roll of Honor Award, and he was put in the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Uh, education, he went to Dalhouse University and Cornell University. Just some other random uh, facts are uh, he was born July 13th, 1946, in New Glasgow, Canada. So, in this part, we're going to talk about the different ways that we relate to Dr. Archibald um, on personal or leadership level. So, uh, I guess I'll start. Personally, I really relate to him because he, if he couldn't get something done, he found a unique, a unique way to do it. When they first started the International Crane Foundation, he and Ron, uh, Ron's family donated a old horse farm of theirs and they converted it into a safe place for the birds and so I thought that was really awesome that they could do that and that he found that way you know he found a way to get done what needed to be done and I think that that's kind of a way that I can relate because if you can't get something done you gotta find a way to do it. Also 
so um, his enjoyment of nature, and I really appreciate that and like connect with that. So, uh, so I personally share a uh, love and curiosity for birds with him. Like, uh, you know, some people might think I'm just a chicken lover, but no, I love all birds, uh, as does uh, George. But uh, yeah, I really enjoy that he's like really into birds, as am I, I love birds. Birds, birds are awesome, so yeah. Oh, he's, George is like, he seems very wise and like, I really look up to him as a person because he's like he's so accepting and he's very wise. Yeah. Um. I I look up to him for his like uh, gentle uh, nature with uh, animals and everything. I think that like everything in nature should be treated with like the absolute most like care and. Everything, so, yeah. Um, so when I was a younger kid, I used to like always think about birds, like ducks, chickens, and peewits, and I really enjoyed birds. I just liked the way they looked, and then later on, when I joined Highmark, we went and visited the International Claim Foundation, and that was my first time there, and I had a lot of fun, and. I really liked to see all of the cranes, except that one species that wasn't there at one time. But, you know, it was really interesting, and I liked it. And I like birds so much that I'm even making a game about ducks. Granted, it's not cranes, but still, I love birds. Our sources here, and acknowledgments. We'd like to make special note uh, to Andy Bangle, Karen Becker, and Dr. George Archibald. We were able to uh, give him our questions through um, his assistance, and it was really cool because we got to, um, you know, get his real, real current input. Uh, although he's very busy, and so we really appreciate that. We also uh, want to acknowledge Susan and our advisors for getting these resources for us because it was really cool. So thank you for everybody's help.